the concept of like the fallen demiurge god mm. that's been um, sort of masqueraded and rebranded and repackaged as the god that most of the uh, Abrahamic religions worship mm. and so on and so on. So um, looking at like let's say the Old Testament and how God mm -hmm. is portrayed there, mm -hmm. how vicious he is, the kind of murder that, and sacrifice that he, you know, he's doing, that he asks for. And then, you know, he's been like rebranded as well in Islam. Um, so mm -hmm. um, Allah, they say he is like a moon god rebranded. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of concept was very interesting for me when I first discovered it, mm -hmm. because I came from a perspective of worshipping God, mm -hmm. loving God, and then when I looked at it on the flip side, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. What? I think they're onto something here. Mm. And then when I went down that rabbit hole, um, I realized a lot of it does make sense. But it's, again, one of those things where it's both things. Um, what is the truth? Will I ever know? But um, yeah, I'd like to hear your opinions on that. The kind of biblical Abrahamic God mm. being a fallen demiurge where he's actually basically the devil in disguise as mm. God. And there is one true infinite creator God, but that is not the God that is in these um, holy texts, let's say. Okay. What's your um, opinions? Yeah, <laughs> um, I mean, you said there is one true infinite God. Um, again, uh, you know, we'll have to explore what you mean by that, who that is, because the thing about the Abrahamic religions is, is funny because they all recognize Abraham as their patriarch. So Muslims, Christians, and Jews come from the same root. So how they can have differences doesn't make sense because if their father is Abraham, um, and again, it depends on whether or not you subscribe to these religions because like how far back do they go? Because, you know, Islam's only 1400 years old um, and that's really tiny in the length of time when you look at the planet and things that have existed, cultures, etc. Um, the life and times or the New Testament's 2000 years old Abrahamic religions with the Hebrew or the Old Testament that's like 4,400 years old. Altogether that's like 6,000 years old. But you have cultures and beings and people that predate all of them. You know, like the, the Zoo Aztecs, the Mayans, the Sumerians, the Egyptians, um, the Chinese, um, the Dogons, you know, you can go on and on. And this goes back millions of years. So, yes, the these gods of the Bible and the Quran, when you start to look at it, they come from the Sumerian texts mainly, um, which is the Gilgamesh epics, the, the, you know, the Sumerian, many Sumerian tablets like the Atrahasis, the Enuma Elish, um, so many of them which they've found. But for, for me or for us personally, in terms of what I subscribe to, which is Wu Sabat, we know that we predate all of them going back to ancient African spirituality and culture. And when you end up in like what people call ancient Egypt, they tie back to the stars. And so we know that we're, we're from outside the planet. People term extraterrestrials. And some of these extraterrestrials are the ones that are coming in in the Bible and people are calling gods. And because they have conflicts, you have good and bad, where you get the terms like Yahweh, Yah's good, and way is bad, or cherubim and seraphim, um, you know, good angels, bad angels, they war with each other and have even Enlil and Enki, um, you know, you can go on Jacob and Esau, like there's just war in between two, two sides or two people, and some of them are doing bad things in the biblical scriptures, and um, some are doing good things. So this is why it's like God is a schizophrenic because he's confused. One minute, He's all loving, like you said, you were, you're asked to worship or to love him, but you're like, why does God need love? Why does God need to be worshipped? Because if you are the creator of everything and you own everything, it's like, that concept doesn't make sense because why does God need emotions? Why is God grieving? Why is God jealous? Why is God having these attributes that are clearly um, lesser beings, you know? So... That whole thing is, is, is a misconception of different beings um, that have come here from different constellations and different places and they have conflicts with each other and it gets translated into the Bible and into the Quran as, you know, God, Allah. But when you start to break down the words, you get different names and they're, they're actually different beings. Like I said, it's Baal will be Enlil, Yahweh will be Enki, 
And then when you go to other cultures, you see the same thing happening. So you go to the Sumerians, you have like um, Damuzi, Ishtar, Tammuz. You know, you go to ancient Egypt, you're going to have Bess and Patar and, you know, all the different families that are having wars and fighting. So it's good for people to do research and study because it kind of, you know, clarifies a lot of misinformation.